Yeah, so um, James Atlas, and I'm a senior lecturer here in computer science, also a consultant in deep learning with Mars Bioimaging. So my work um, mainly focuses in physics integrated machine learning models. Um, I work with astrophysicists, biologists, uh, obviously medical imaging, which is what I'm going to talk about today, but really any kind of network where you need um, physics-based prior knowledge or uh, what we like to do is to integrate it into the model. So that could either be in the form of constraints or differentiable operations that are part of a simulation which you can then backpropagate and fix errors in the network. Um, so today's talk is from Deep Learning in Spectral Computed Tomography. Um, and if any of you have had medical imaging, you might have had a CT scan done. Uh, typically what happens in uh, current practice is you either get a single monochromatic energy CT or potentially a dual energy CT. Um, this spectral imaging, which I'm introducing today, takes that concept and expands it to a full spectrum. So rather than getting an output, which is mostly just grayscale density mapping of the single energy that was passed through your body when you're taking a medical scan, we got a polychromatic beam going through. And we have special detector hardware, which can pick up on the signature of different materials at different energy thresholds. All right, I'm glancing over a lot of the physics details here. Um, but what that really gives us is the ability to go back and look at a phantom of materials and identify what particular material was where in your scan. All right, what that enables in terms of medical technology is us to use very low radiation dose to pick up on materials within the body very high spatial resolution, so the new technology chips they have go down to 90 micron, allows us to use non-radioactive contrast agents. There's all sorts of interesting work in nanoparticle development if you're into that kind of thing. But the end result is an image you kind of see on the right here, where we can identify both um, bone tissue, differentiations in tissue, but more specifically things like calcifications or uh, small changes in the human body that might lead to uh, potential information for diagnosis for pathologies and other things. Um, so in a sense here, that spectral CT, where does machine learning fit in this? Um, well, if you are aware of the complex algorithms that go through from taking 60 gigabytes worth of projection image data and generating what you see on the right there, um, you'll know that it takes many, many steps. Uh, so those steps I've kind of broken down today into projection image processing, model-based reconstruction, material identification and quantification, and medical segmentation and metrics. And that sort of flows from uh, the data stream uh, left to right or sort of pre-processing all the way through. And in fact, I'll just say machine learning belongs in all of these spaces. All right, that's how we make it not a black box magic solution. We just attack a narrow AI problem of each step in there. All right, and I'm not gonna go dive into too many of the details. That's essentially what my group group works on, um, but some of those results can be shown. So here we've got uh, some results that are sort of towards the later end of the pipeline here with artifact reduction and super sampling image quality improvements. Um, what that means is we can go to fine detail, maybe segment bone in an image or provide a likelihood that a particular material is present in a part of the body. All right, we also can do things like ultra scale resolution. So um, if you don't know the details of CT, that's fine. Uh, advanced model-based reconstruction can take a huge amount of computation power. All right, that's a good thing for machine learning, which means that we can actually train models based on the result of spending massive amounts of computation. And if we then super sample from a lower amount of computation solution to that higher uh, resolution, we can essentially do this in real time then. Rather than waiting weeks for your CT to be reconstructed, we've trained a model to go from that cheap construction, you know, typical back propagation, a lot of extra physics constraints in there with a modified UNED and all the things in there. Uh, but the end result is you can get a very high resolution result, even though you spent very little computation time generating it. Um, we've also got some low-level uh, details in terms of the actual technology. Aaron's here. Go see his poster. Go talk to him. Um, essentially, we can correct for certain physics effects that happen as long as we have a situation where we could get the ground truth and then look at what was uh, resulting or measured empirically. One of those are charge sharing distortions, which happens in a lot of uh, different kinds of pixelated or, or sort of discrete systems. This one has some special case scenarios where electron clouds flow into different pixels, and then you'd have no idea where the pixel originated from. All right, we can actually correct that as long as we have a clean version of it to start with. Um, and the end result in terms of 
uh, what we can share with a clinician or radiologist is something like this, which is um, a map of materials over the body. This is uh, sort of cutting edge work with nanoparticles, with gold nanoparticles that have attached to the wall of, um, I forget, uh, the aorta or something like that. Um, I'm definitely not a med medical person here. But the end result is we can look at very fine detail over time. So these are images that we can take over time and then say, look, we actually can see the progression of something. Um, we might target certain pathologies like cancer or um, sort of deterioration within an arterial wall. Um, those are the kinds of things that we can pick up on. As long as we can give this information to the clinicians, we're not aiming for that general super AI that's going to diagnose you. We're just handing nice images like this on to your uh, radiologist. All right, so that's it. I just want to quickly thank all of the people involved. Quite honestly, I'm just one of a huge number of people in this project. Feel free to talk to me or my students outside in their posters. Thank you. Thank you.